神はいたかお前を殺す This is Ashley with Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 anime you didn't realize had live action adaptations. For this list, we're going to be looking over the flicks based on celebrated anime that you probably had no clue even existed. Hey, if it's popular, then it's free real estate, so saith Japanese film studios. Think we missed any cringy attempts at a live action anime movie? Let us know in those comments. And as always, you can catch me on Twitter at AshJBo, e so head over there, give me a follow, and let me know which anime list you want to see next. Number 20. Kaguya Sama Love is War. It's one of the most celebrated rom com anime to date, so naturally, someone thought it would translate well in front of the camera. Bless their hearts for trying, but the only actor who's really selling this is the narrator, and that's because it's the same guy from the anime. Nyosha, pride ga taka sigite. Nani mo okora na katta! While the movie tries to capture Kaguya and Miyuki's funniest moments, it doesn't so much come across as hilariously adorable as it does kind of awkward. Like Ishigami levels of awkward. Nobody wants to see sick Kaguya, real life edition. <laughs> Number 19, Tokyo Revengers. Jeez, they didn't wait around for this one, did they? The anime hasn't even finished, and Takamichi already has a live action counterpart waiting in the wings. There's an obvious amount of effort put in here, from the fight scenes to the weak game, not to mention the number of times Takamichi gets his ass beat, so at least they're hitting the key checkpoints. We won't say it's superior to the anime in any way, but we are impressed they got someone to pull off Mikey's look so well. Number 18, The Promised Neverland. Well, at least it's better than season 2? Yeah, there really isn't much going for this one. On every conceivable level, the animated vision surpasses, uh, well, whatever this is. The sets are painfully low grade, the actors playing Emma, Ray, and Norman can barely pass for kids, and you'll notice that Krone is, well, not very Krone. Don't go into this one expecting to be thrilled to your core. As it stands, the only thing scary about it is that that thing is supposed to be Emma's hair. Number 17, Erased. <laughs> the anime equivalent proved to be one of the better mystery thrillers to come out over the past few years, with some visceral elements courtesy of deeply upsetting scenes revolving around child abuse and murder. Not exactly a light hearted jaunt through anime's funnier tropes. Its live action vision, for the most part, acts as a pretty good abridgment of the show, with a few cut corners just to arrive at that stinger of an ending. If you're not willing to spend five hours watching the series, then this would be a good enough replacement. Yeah. Number 16, Inuyashiki. Maybe they should just get the message and leave Hiroya Oku's work alone. The man knows how to bring together violence, horror, and sci fi in a way that can't be replicated. At the very least, compared to their previous attempts at a live action Gantz film, Inuyashiki is an enjoyable romp. If only for how lovable its leading man is, even after he becomes a cyborg. <laughs> The fact it also cuts off before that all important canon conclusion takes away what little agency it had. Number 15, another. 
もう始まってるかもしれない。The amount of side characters that get knocked off in this series is almost comical, and that might actually be a big part of why the show has fans. After all, Death by Umbrella doesn't scream hardcore horror. As for the live action version, in some ways it's far from being boring, while in others it's actually funnier. With its low production quality, what you end up watching is a watered down version of Final Destination. The creativity that goes into the kills is gone, but in exchange, we get to see the extremely poor special effects. Either way, don't expect to be scared while watching this. Number 14 Daily Lives of High School Boys. Remember how the anime barraged us with a succession of rapid fire skits that were both endearing and crass? Turns out that doesn't translate well to the big screen. They've certainly got an abundant amount of uncomfortable silence in between all the gags, and with the rather bleak visuals, it's more like we're watching some kind of weird documentary about a group of teens going through mundane events with an extra slice of embarrassment. Harmless, but not likely to get much of a chuckle out of you. Number 13, Mirai Niki, Another World. Sorry to say, folks, you know Gasai isn't here. So don't go in expecting to see us slicing up people with axes or busting out that famous Yandere expression. This drama series actually considers itself an original story, separating itself from the source material. Sounds intriguing. What's it about? Oh, a lazy high school student is entered into the battle royale after he finds out his phone can predict the future, and he has a stalker whose first name is. you know. Huh. Okay, so changing the surnames doesn't count as original. Not that you'll ever care since the quality of the series is pretty dismal. Number 12, Nisekoi. Erotic harem romance with the offspring of gangsters. Nisekoi was a fun time, even if some disagreed on who was the true best girl. Oddly enough, given how overdramatic these live action versions tend to be, this film sort of fits into Nisekoi's mold, especially with how bonkers and out there they make Raku and Chitoge's romance. <laughs> The main duo are giving it their all and manage to capture some of the couple's explosive chemistry. You gotta respect it for going out of its way to adapt the hot spring scene. <laughs> Number 11, The Disastrous Life of Psyche K. As far as anime comedies go, Psyche steals the show every time. The banter, colorful cast, and unrelenting fourth wall breaks made it a gem to watch and impossible to adapt into live action, which this film more than proved. The production value is terrible, with the cast looking like eager cosplayers who just walk into frame. <laughs> When the only accurate thing about your film is replicating Nendo's testicle shaped chin, then you've definitely stepped in it. Clearly, this was funded by Dark Reunion. Number 10, Great Teacher Onizuka. Man, this guy really wasn't kidding. He's such a great teacher that he has many live action television series under his belt over the years. However, the one we're focusing on is the original series, starring Takashi Sorimachi. Onizuka is a man who fluctuates between being a total badass, a lovable oaf, and a creep desperate to score some nucky. <laughs> the series mostly captures this, but it's kind of hard to ignore how traditionally handsome the lead actor is compared to his anime counterpart. There's no shortage of live action Onizuka to indulge in. But this series is probably the best of the bunch. Number 9, Parasite. We give them full props for taking the time to at least attempt to cover the legendary source material across two films, even if it doesn't come close to reaching the original's benchmark. 
It mainly falls to how the special effects vary from passable to poor at the drop of a hat. Sure, we get to see Shinichi engage in a few tentacle battles here and there. <laughs> But when the infamous opening scene of a woman getting her head devoured is reduced to an MS Paint level of quality, you can kind of see why some people looked at this film in an unforgivable light. <gasps> Number 8. Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon <laughs> Oof, right in the childhood. While at first glance this looks like a low budget tokusatsu, and it kind of is, but it has so much sickly charm and an aim at a young female demographic that it's hard to completely hate this show. <laughs> Emphasis on the completely. Its transformation sequences and sudden musical interludes may have you cringing, but it must be doing something right to get its initially decent ratings and record sales. Again, you're probably much better watching the anime before this. But at least their cheesiness is fabulous. <laughs> Number seven, Kaiji series. <laughs> While not exactly the breakthrough adaptation, these films are still worthy of praise. Following the gambling exploits of our constantly failing protagonist, both the initial flick and its sequel managed to translate the manga's greatest moments, mainly due to the fact that creator Nobuyuki Fukumoto helped to craft the script. It may not have the stylized tension that made the show such a hit, but look at it this way. If not for the second kaiji movie, we wouldn't have gotten the second anime series. That alone warrants this movie's existence. Number 6, Higurashi When They Cry Given how many timelines and cycles of death this franchise has put its cast through, there's no reason not to think that both of these films are just part of its grand bloody design. Okay, maybe that's a stretch, especially since they look like this. Based on the question and answer arcs, there's a genuine attempt here to build up the suspense, but this is far, far from standing at the pinnacle of Japanese horror. There's only ever going to be one Renner and one Cleaver. Number 5 Assassination Classroom No, your eyes are not deceiving you. They actually made a live action Korra Sensei, and it looks just as ridiculous as you would have expected. You know what's even more surprising? They actually made a pretty faithful adaptation. Given how out of the world the original series was, the movies managed to balance the crazy action, characters, and premise rather well. There's obviously a budget behind it, the slapstick humor goes a long way, and the longer you watch him, the more the CGI Koro Sensei starts to grow on you. Class E would be proud. <laughs> Number 4, Terraformers While the original gave us terrifying humanoid cockroaches and a buffet of gore, this attempt at a movie just comes across as an icky waste of time. These CGI roaches, terrible makeup effects, and less than stellar fight scenes not only fail to impress, but will also have you wondering why they didn't just take the money needed to create this monstrosity and give us another season of the bloody anime. Interesting. Pretty hard to invest in a sci-fi punch-up when the aliens we're meant to be terrified of look like they've pulled themselves out of a backed up toilet. <laughs> Number 3, Gintama. These films have no right to be as good as they are, and yet they completely nail the ridiculous narratives and atmosphere that the source material is hailed for. We mainly attribute this to the portrayal of Gintoki, who melds badassery and absurdity in equal measure. 
ちは。It shouldn't be possible, and yet every time this silver soul wannabe opens up his mouth or unleashes his sword, we're fully convinced the original Gintoki just hopped dimensions and got cast in his own flick. If anything, that's a more plausible explanation. Number two, Prison School. You'll remember this anime, right? How it had gripping story about bromance, while also being submerged in more fan service, boobs, edginess, and every other kind of lewd content imaginable. Yeah, well, they made a live action series about that. As you might expect, the proportions of the characters are substantially dialed down. Though to their credit, there's plenty of chest and panty shots. We'd say kudos to them for sticking to the original works almost to the letter, but in doing so, it actually comes across as even more perverted. We're guessing that's a win? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Dragon Ball The Magic Begins. Granddad, with this magic pole, I can protect you and the pearl from any invaders. <laughs> So you thought Dragon Ball Evolution was the biggest crime against the DB name? Behold, the unofficial Taiwanese adaptation of the Dragon Ball movie, Curse of the Blood Rubies. Not that you'd be able to tell as the production quality is beyond the pale of bad, made all the worse by the hysterically poor English dubbing. Okay, I'll show ya! If you think you're brave enough and just want to watch trash of the highest caliber, you can't go wrong with what has to be Goku's second most degrading outing. You are all only granted one wish. So what do you wish for? You must tell me now. Oh wait, he's not called Goku in the dub. He's Monkey Boy. We're not joking. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.